Hello and welcome. My name is Alan and today we are doing more Spooktober videos. This time we are talking about a cryptid. One you may or may not have heard of. It is the Bishopville, South Carolina monster, also known as the Lizard Man of Scape or Swamp. Yeah, it's got a couple of different names. It's. But, uh. It gives you an idea about where it's at. On July the 14th, 1988, the Lee County, South Carolina Sheriff's Office investigated a report of overnight car damage while it was parked at home outside of Bishopville, South Carolina. tooth marks and scratches, as well as hair and muddy footprints were the clues found at the scene. This is listed as one of the first of several accounts of what became known as the Lizard Man of Skateboard Swamp. With the number of sightings started in 1987 and 88 to the most recent sightings in 2015, it is a legend that is a fairly new one. Um, Lee County and Bishopville are in the northeastern part of the state. They're just north of Sumter, South Carolina, and they are inland um, a few counties away from the Atlantic coast. The history of sightings um, and things like this in North Carolina, well, in the Carolinas period, is not new. The lost island, the lost uh, colony of Roanoke was supposed to be off the coast of the Carolinas. Uh, and I think I also mentioned before the Brown Mountain Lights in North Carolina. So the place does have some history with the paranormal. Um, actual sightings of humanoid lizard people go back uh, worldwide to mythology with the Egyptian god Sobek. Um, an Egyptian deity who was mostly human except for his head was a crocodile's head. And then we also have from mythology the semi-divine Naga, a half serpent, half human being uh, from South Asian mythology. There are also lizard people purportedly that are subterranean, some believe, as well as uh, living in Los Angeles. There have been reports of them there. There are also um, beliefs some people have of a race of shape-shifting reptilians that 
are trying to take over the world if you get into the conspiracy theories. The idea of lizard people have appeared in numerous forms uh, in, a me in media over the years. But the lizard man of Skapor Swamp specifically has appeared in more countable appearances, including episodes on the show's Destination Truth and uh, Fact or Faked Paranormal Files. It has a, uh, a few appearances in a, in a few books and hundreds of newspaper accounts and um, news pieces, whether they be online or uh, radio or what have you. So it's got some history. Let's try to give it a little more of a significant breakdown here. The first reported sighting was made by one George Holloman in the fall of 1987. No real confirmation on what I was just looking up, uh, but they do suggest that he was the first to actually see the lizard man of Skapor Swamp. But the first actual big report was in June the 29th, 1988, when um, a report um, when 17 year old Christopher Davis claimed to encounter the creature while driving home from working at a fast food restaurant at around 2 a.m. He supposedly got a flat on his way home. And so he had to stop and uh, change an actual tire, which had blown out. While he was finishing up, he reported having heard a thumping noise from behind him and having turned around to see the creature running towards him. Now, reports are a little bit different um, because they do vary from telling to telling because there in that one article, it says it was running in another he said it was walking. But he described it as a green, wet like, about seven feet tall, with three fingers, red eyes, skin like a lizard, snake like scales. Hmm. Yeah, and here in this particular article on Wikipedia, it says, after fixing the flat, he saw a creature walking toward him. While, like I said in the other article, from um, Cryptid's fandom, which tries to give you some information on cryptozoological things, they said it was running towards him. So there's a little bit of discrepancies with Davis's reports, but he is a 17-year-old. We don't know how much is going to be solidly accurate. But Davis support reportedly got in his car and began to drive. He said, but the creature was soon on top of his car. Um, because it tried to grab at the, um, 
car and then jumped on uh, on its roof as he tried to escape, clinging on to it as Davis swerved from side to side in an effort to throw the creature off. He's, uh, it also, in the Wikipedia article, it says he applied his brakes, causing the creature to roll off the car, though, giving Davis time to escape. It said, uh, when he returned home, Davis's side view mirror was found to be badly damaged and scratch marks were found on the car's roof. Roof, though there was no other physical evidence of his encounter. And in quot quotations, Davis supposedly says, I looked back and saw something running across the field towards me. It was 25 yards away and I saw red eyes glowing. I ran into the car and as I locked it, the thing grabbed the door handle. I could see him from the neck down, the three big fingers, long black nails, and green rough skin. It was strong and angry. I looked in my mirror and saw a blur of green running. I could see his toes, and then he jumped on the roof of my car. I thought I heard him, or I thought I heard a grunt, and then I could see his fingers through the front of the windshield. So apparently it was had its hands down around the roof with the fingers just leaning over the front trying to hold on. So he says, I sped up and swerved to shake the creature off. So yeah, this is the first big, big report we have of the lizard man. Like I said, the George Holloman report, it was just he claimed he sighted the thing in 87. Two weeks after the Davis sighting, the Sheriff's Department made several plaster casts of what appeared to be three-toed footprints measuring some 14 inches in length, but decided against sending them to the FBI for further analysis after bi biologists advised them that they were unclassifiable. And according to South Carolina Marine Resources Department spokesman Johnny Evans, the tracks neither matched nor could be mistaken for the footprints of any recorded animal. Evans also dismissed the possibility that they could have been made by some form of mutated creature. So we've already got people trying to suggest it may be something more than ident already identified creatures. But the increase in newspaper and media publicly prompted further reports of sightings, and the area soon became a tourist attraction for visitors and hunters. Local radio station WCOS offered a $1 million reward to anybody who could capture the creature alive. On August 5th, Kenneth Orr, an airman stationed at Shaw Air Force Base, filed a police report alleging that he had encountered the Lizard Man on Highway 15, and he had shot and wounded it. He presented several scales and a small quantity of blood as evidence. Or then recanted this account two days later when he was arraigned for unlawfully carrying a pistol and the misdemeanor offense of filing a police report, false police report, 
According to Orr, he had hoaxed the sighting in order to keep stories about the lizard man in circulation. Reports of the creature gradually did decline at the end of the summer. Local law enforcement officials speculated that the sightings were likely to have been caused by a bear. And then over in the uh, cryptids.fandom.com, the sightings attracted to tourists interested in seeing the creature and hunters interested in tracking it. And the nearby radio station, WCOS, offered a $1 million reward for anybody who could capture the creature alive. So again, there's mention of that reward. However, the reports of the creature began to decline at the end of the summer, and the last credible sighting of the year being reported in, was in July. And then on August 5th, Kenneth Orr, an airman, you know, that, that whole story. So, let's see. And then it says, the lizard man was described as having green scaly skin with either red or orange eyes and three finger webbed hands. It stood about seven feet tall and had a, strand, a stride of about 40 inches. The lizard man of scape or swamp is said to inhabit areas of swampland in and around Lee County, South Carolina, along the sewers and abandoned subways in towns near the swamp. Let me see if what else they've got on the Wikipedia article. On Wikipedia, they've also got mentioned here in 2008, CNN mentioned the Lizard Man legend in a story about a couple in Bishopville, South Carolina, who reported damage to their vehicle, including blood traces. The blood traces were subsequently found to be from a domestic dog, though the local sheriff suggested it might have been a coyote or a wolf. In 2015, Local television station WCIV featured photos and videos claimed to be a lizard man allegedly taken by unidentified individuals. In August of 2017, the South Carolina Emergency Management Division sent a humorous tweet out regarding possible paranormal activity during the solar eclipse clips that passed over the area, hinting that people of Lee and Sumter counties should remain vigilant for sightings of the lizard man. Uh, let's see. Now, there are some um, people who have investigated it with a skeptical view, including interviews with Christopher Davis himself, in which they claim they do notice the discrepancies. Um... says under criticism on Wikipedia, skeptical investigator Ben Radford states that the details of Chris Davis's story do not hold up under scrutiny. Sheriff Truesdale stated that Davis's story never wavered, but Radford states that isn't true. Over weeks and months and repeated tellings, the details changed many times. From having scales to the creature being packed with mud, how far away Davis was from the creature when he first saw it, and whether or not it attacked the car. 
Radford questioned how Davis was able to see the details of the lizard man creature at 2 a.m. when there was no lighting nearby in a heavily wooded area when the moon was not bright. If this was an aggressive creature, they why were there no other credible sightings? According to Radford, the timing of Davis's story didn't make sense. If Davis saw the creature in the shadows while he was closing the trunk of his car after changing his tire, Davis still had to get back in the car and take off. Yet Davis claims that the creature was so fast that it caught up to the car when he was doing 40 miles an hour. Reports vary with the source that Davis told the police about the attack two or more weeks later. After investigating, Radford states that the lie detector test administered to Davis may have been a publicity stunt by Southern Marketing Incorporated. And yes, I do look this up. There is an actual lie detector test they did on him. But it says uh, that that may be a company arranging personal appearances for Davis. Another curious issue was that there are no photographs of the damage to Davis's car, which provide some evidence that something happened. Newspaper accounts give various descriptions of the damage to the car. And in one local newspaper, Davis is quoted as saying, he escaped with no more than a scratch on his fender. Now remember, in the one part it said it was only scratches on the roof. Radford states that Davis's report is quite literally incredible, riddled with implausibilities and impossibilities. It may be sincere, or it may be a hoax, but in either event, no hard evidence of the creature has been found. Now, looking up my information on the lizard man of Scape or Swamp, there's also an article uh, done by Vice which is titled Reptile Dysfunction. I tried to find South Carolina's famed lizard man. So, in this, there is a uh, investigator named Justin Roberson, or reporter, I'm not sure. But Justin Roberson looks into the Legend of the Lizard Man of Scape or Swamp. He tells about Christopher Davis, about it going into the papers. Uh, in 2007, the South Carolina Education Lottery used Lizard Man as a promotional tool to move lottery tickets. With heightened interest in the legend, a new Lizard Man incident began rolling in. Suddenly, dead cows and coyotes were attributed to the lizard man. In 2011, a mauled car caused a local news report to ask, Is the lizard man back in Lee County? He talks about growing up in Greenville, South Carolina, and he first heard about the lizard man about the, when he was about the age of 10 at a basketball camp. Uh, hmm. Talking about never go out alone at night. He'll that's when he'll get you. Having nightmares of the lizard man when he was young. And do, do, do. He says earlier this month, which I think this was an article from 2015. Lizard Man made national news by being photographed and filmed strolling through the woods. Other than 
a set of footprints found outside a butter bean shed in 1988. There has been very little physical evidence of the lizard man's existence. In the most recent photo, the lizard man is ridiculously buff and appears to be strutting like Ric Flair. But he does po possess all the key features, the three claws, the red eyes, some feet that could make some footprints. So, yeah. And, of course, because uh, this is the same time about the photos and footage taken by unknown individuals. Um, along with the renewed interest came the news stories, tweets, and posts, most of which offered an air of superiority from larger outlets. I saw the teasing, I saw the memes, mocking cryptids is low-hanging fruit, but mocking the southerners who report these sightings is like kicking the fruit you already knocked on the ground. This legend permeates my state and is incredibly linked to Lee County, South Carolina. Lizard Man is much more than a punchline uh, to a joke. Even if this photo looks to be a board uh, for pedophiliac adept at sewing, how can anyone say with certainty that Lizard Man does or does not exist? What's scarier? what we don't know and what we think we do and so he talks about he wants to know more about the lizard man he wanted to find him. uh he talks to one jansen cox head curator of the south carolina cotton museum and a local lizard man historian in bishopville Um, said Cox is rightly objective and protective of Lizard Man. He won't outright admit that he definitely exists. Saying in quotations, we're here to supply the fantasy. But then again, his role isn't to speculate. It's to document. Every newspaper clipping involving the Lizard Man has been compiled into a plastic ring binder and is an exhibit. A few pieces of paper explaining historical context and a collection of vintage t-shirts and a plaster mode of the liver man's huge footprints in a glass case scattered with dry butter beans. Now remember, that's, they said that's the only real evidence they found. Such as the attention about the Lizard Man centers on much of the attention about the Lizard Man centers on the 1988 attack, but the legends of the Lizard Man do go back, talked about for centuries. Cox explains. So published in 1520, the testimony of Francisco de Chicora contains some of the first eyewitness accounts of southeastern Native Americans, and within those stories, they tell of men with tails a meter long and as thick as a man's arm, who ate nothing but raw fish. Even the nomenclature of the area helps legitimize the myth. Luckles call that um, part scape ore, which refers to a British phonetic bastardization of skelepore, plural for skeleporis, which is the scientific genus of the abundant eastern fence lizards that inhabit the area. In March 2015, paleontologists found skull and bone fragments in North Carolina, which led to a discovery of Carnifex carolinensis, or Carolina Butcher, a land-dwelling croc 
crocodilomorph. Carnifex is a crocodile-like creature that walked on its hind legs and lived in the Carolina swamps about 230 million years ago. Even if our friend, the Carolina Butcher, didn't directly evolve into a man that was also a lizard that ate cars, the image of Lizard Man has, in a very direct and obvious way, been embedded in the soul, soil of the Carolinas. Let's see. It continues talking uh, with Johnson Cox, who says, um, This is, after all, South Carolina, a state that until the summer had flew the Confederate flag over its capital. Everything has a racial undertone, especially in an attack on a young black man. And Cox says, you had blacks feeling like Davis was being exploited. And whites felt like their sheriff, Liston Truesdale, was being made a fool of by the media. <sighs> so let's see. Talk about they talk about um, the media frenzy that it, uh, the the incident caused. They say Truesdale never quite figured out what it was that terrorized Davis on that night in 2001. He said of the Lizard Man, I can't prove it's real and I can't prove it's not real. The Huffington Post reported that in 2009, a now deceased Truesdale was called in to help investigate a car mauling similar to the 1988 um, attack on Davis. Let's see. So, Roberson uh, says he leaves the museum. Uh, and he looks for other information about the lizard man. He said he drove to where Christopher Davis was supposedly attacked. He drove to the Butterbean Shed where the creature's footprint was taken. And he drove to the Skateboard Bridge where the Lizard Man gets in and out of the swamp. He said he actually planned to reverse back into the swamp and see if he could catch the Lizard Man. And he pulled on his waders and ventured underneath the bridge. He noticed a number of tires already resting in the creek. None of them appeared to have any attack marks. Uh, he follows the creek back into the swamp for about an hour and he stops. He jokingly says, he calls out and says, Hey, lizard man, it's me. <clears throat> course no response it says uh, he talks some more about the swamp about its growth and everything um, and says it's easy for your eyes to play tricks on you but still he never saw the lizard man I never even thought I saw him so, with several hours still until nightfall, he says he parks his car downtown. He watched a man in front of him set up and scale a ladder underneath a marquee and inside uh, of a building that itself was vacant. He swapped the letters, climbed down, and folded up the ladder and walked off. 
he got out of his car to read the sign that the man put up, and it says, the lizard man, he's back. So he says, after midnight, he revisits the area with where Christopher Davis was attacked. Although he had been there hours ago, he didn't recognize anything. With his headlights on, he still couldn't see more than 20 feet in front of him. And with them off, he couldn't see anything. So he turns off the headlights, exits the car, and crept forward through the void. He said, I felt like something was watching me. So I turned on my flashlight. In the distance, two yellow orbs reflected back. All of the lizard man sightings may have been by people who were alone at the time. And I was alone right then, in more or less the same spot as Christopher Davis was when he first encountered the lizard man. It's in moments like this, in the moments of silence w between the cricket chirps, frog croaks, and rustling leagues, leaves that make up the white noise of rural America, when you can feel totally alone and yet surrounded by monsters of your own design. It's moments like those that make the lizard man feel real. real. He had just, he talks about uh, looking again with his flashlight. It turns out it's just a cat. Let's see. But yeah. And he talks about how the lizard man may just remain a legend. But that's good for the town. It gives it something to be visited for. To have industry, tourism. Which sometimes these little towns, that's all they've got. But. My thoughts there is nothing definitive in any of the stories. They seem to have alterations and changes, which, again, with Christopher Davis's story, which is the most prominent one, he was a 17-year-old when he saw it, when he supposedly saw it. It may have been just a misidentification, a hoax. His memory may not be that great. But, you know, Maybe he did see something. It may just not have been what he thought it was. And then the story of Kenneth Orr. He recounted, recanted his own sighting just two days later. So honestly, while it's an interesting story, there's not much really there to hold on to. Physically, we've got the one footprint in the Butterbean Shed. The cops said they took plaster casts of the footprints of a damaged car in the mud, but apparently they've tossed them or something because 
They didn't say anything else about them. Took blood samples from the one car they believed attacked by the lizard man, but it was from a dog. And early on, when I was reading some of the pieces, it said they found hair. Lizards, while they do have hair, it's not a lot. You know, hair and fur is more of a mammal trait. It's not really something very often akin to lizards. So, you have to get into thinking, okay, while there has been a number of reported sightings, even back to the book they claim published in 1520 talking about the Native Americans speaking of a lizard man or of a being with a tail that ate raw fish. You have to say, okay, again, that's just anecdotal. Is there places for a lizard man to live in a hide out there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The woods and swamps of the southeast holds plenty of room for one to hide. But when you get to thinking about it, it has to be a breeding population. I'm sure they could probably find food. You have wild edibles all over. Again, the Southland, the Southeast. But I doubt there's a breeding population or the sightings would be much more plentiful. And if there's no breeding population, then I doubt it exists. Again, these sightings may be something else that it can be attributed to. Because at night, when the moon is a new moon and there is no light out, especially no street lights or anything, get very dark. You mind could play tricks on you. So again, I'm not going to say these people lied or anything, but they may have been confused as to what they saw. So it's an interesting tale, one with possibilities for existing, but you really get down to examining it, not much of a chance as you first think, so, but it's a good story. So my, my conclusion is, no, it don't exist. But that'll be it for now. As always, think, read, study, learn. Someone tries to tell you something you have trouble believing, ask them to cite their sources. I will go ahead and have the links down in the description below. But for now, I'll see you all in the next episode. Until then. Later.